Hi, welcome back to the nursery. This is John from John's Carnivorous Plants, and today I'm going to talk about on how to breed, divide, and clone Pedialera sundews. So first off, I'm going to show you nature's intended method, pollination. Inside here, we got flower, and you can see it has these little yellow parts right there. Those are the male parts. Very kind of hard to see. I'm going to see if I can get the camera to focus in on it. There's little white parts in there. Those are the female parts. Our goal is to get the pollen from this flower over here, which it's starting to close. Probably not the best example at this point. But you open it up, there's the anthers. Our goal is to just get the pollen from one to the other. Pedialera sundews cannot uh, self pollinate, so you have to have a different uh, a genetically different specimen in order to uh, pollinate them and get seed now for the next two methods these are the primary ways in which I produce pedialera sundews which are through divisions and uh, leaf uh, coolings I guess would be the best term to use so to divide a pedialera sundew you're gonna have to uproot it because you can see it grows into a very large clump over time multiple pieces I like to make it easy on myself and cut the flowers off so I don't have things falling on the ground. Come on in with my forceps and I get up and underneath as much of the rosettes as I can. I very gently lift and you will see the plant will very gently come out. Okay, here we have our nice clump. I'm going to go ahead and very carefully remove as much of the dirt as I can. This is a very messy process, so wear some gloves if you want to. At this point, I'm kind of immune to the uh, dirtiest factor. So I'm sorry if uh, you have some OCD and this is driving you nuts. So pity layer sundews are kind of tricky to keep because of their watering, because they occur in a, a more desert-like environment than most other sundews. So because of that, you'll notice they have very, very, very long roots. Make sure you uh, are very gentle in pulling, because if you damage those, it'll take a long time for them to recover. And unlike most sundews, you'll notice like they're pretty whitish. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus in. Pretty whitish all the way up as you clean off the roots. You don't need them perfectly clean. I just like to have it so I'm not just having big old clumps of soil everywhere. So now we get to the point where we're actually cleaning them for like. Cleaning off dead foliage, you can just go ahead and just pull right down. And as you'll see, dead foliage comes right off. Let me get that on camera better. All right. All right. So now I got to a point where I can kind of see where each of the rosettes are. So what you want to do is you want to take four steps is what I ideally use. And let me see if I can clean that out so you can see it better. You can kind of see there is an in inlet in this one. This is telling me that this one wants to divide off on its own. But they connect down towards the base here. So I like to take the forcep and kind of notch it out and free it from the base. Otherwise, if you just pull, you'll rip the, fu the, the frontal part of this rosette off and you'll still have all the roots attached. And you wanna give it some roots for the best chance of surviving. All right, uh, I should be able to pull it away. And as you can see, did exactly what I was telling you not to do, and I didn't get many roots. This guy will still live though. Actually, I think I got a little tiny root right there. But that is a very good cutting piece right there. We'll save that for later. Okay, pot gently on the top of whatever pot you're using. I'll usually use a chopstick to push it down if it has more roots. So let me get a good, better example. The good news is, whenever you do what I just did right there, this nodule will develop into usually one or two more divisions. So fear not. So if the other one doesn't take, you usually just gave yourself an extra few. But usually they'll just come right apart. Especially if you can get the division just right. 
it's kind of hard to see, but like you'll notice one will be going one way, one will be going the other way for like the leaves. And that's kind of like what you want to use as your guide. Bloop. There we go. Like I actually got some root that time. Excellent. And you'll notice I still got a bit of that callus right there. So it'll still reproduce into another one. It actually encourages it. Is what I found in my experience. So if you're not too uh, fearful of dividing the Pediolaria sundae, you will be very handsomely rewarded. It's just being very careful dividing this rhizome. So you got a nice thick root there. Now they'll kind of hobble along for a few months after they've been divided. Nothing to worry about. But the uh, mama will continue on. It'll more than likely produce way more new uh, divisions. Like what's kind of crazy is that all of these plants right here were divided not even two months ago, and that's how many divisions I already got off these pedialaris already. So right there, that's four more plants off of one, and I just recently divided it. Now the other method of cloning Pedialaris sundews is leaf pullings. So whenever I was doing the cloning, oh, I ripped off a piece here. You notice it's kind of similar on how you would take a Venus flytrap pulling. So you don't even need to uproot them, and that's what I'll do with this one to kind of give an example. Just like you would with a Venus flytrap, just straight down, pull. Make sure you get, I don't know, get my camera, get the white bit, and then put it in a cup. Ooh, I actually got a couple more leaves down here that are good. And then you take some water, float it on in there, and bang. You've now done some leaf pullings up here later some days. Now, I do have to caution, this method of cloning uh, Pedialaris sundews is very hit or miss. You will end up with some uh, pullings having great success, some not. So as a proof of point though, you'll have it down here in this container for about a month or two. Sometimes up to six months, depending on the species. Even if it's all brown and nasty, just let it sit as long as they're not, you know, they still have turgidity is I think the word, where they still actually have like, you know, some uh, rigidity to their structure. But after a while, you will see little babies pop up. Like right here, here are some baby Drosera lunata still on the leaves. It's a Drosera pedialaris that I just recently cloned. These guys are about I think, three months old from the pulling. It's back whenever I divided. So like two, three months ago. Either way, that's how you produce uh, Pediolaris sundews and propagate them. Uh, the seeds on these guys will usually form over the course of a few months. You'll notice that these guys right here right now have all kinds of color to them. They'll become brown. You'll even notice, like, you can kind of see, if you look very closely, the color of the, leaf, the petal still in there. That'll actually turn black and start pushing out as the seeds are formed. And you'll actually see them swell, especially if you were successful in pollinating them. And you should get quite a few seeds out of every one uh, that you successfully pollinate. And they take, I think, uh, about, you know, a few months to germinate, and then a couple of years to get to full size. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this was a lot of information. And I hope you're able to now propagate your Pedialaris sundews. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you on the next one.